Hi folks, I'm Technivorous and this is an introduction to Kira 4.11 for new users and those who need a buffer course. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Technivorous. Here we are in the all new Kira 4.11. Now, they say all new when you download it. It's not really all new, but there is a lot of graphical changes to buttons and things like that and some other nice UI changes that are really, really nice. Other than that, not too many changes in this version, so if you're familiar with older versions, you're probably gonna know most of what I'm talking about. If, however, you are completely new to Kira, as the title of this video implies, feel free to stick around at the end where I'll put up a couple of cards, and one of them will be for my Kira settings in five minutes or less video, where I go over each of these individual settings one by one in their own specific five minute video breaking down how they work and what they work in conjunction with basically how to use them. I also have another playlist I'll put up at the end of this video called Kira Questions. Now you go ahead and leave any questions you may have about Kira, slice it down in the comments down below and I will make a video just for you answering your question. I have about 25 videos in this playlist already and I'm adding to it pretty much every week because I get a lot of Kira questions. So with that being said, let's jump right into Kira Slicer. Now, I do already have a machine set up. If you don't have a machine set up, I'll show you how to do that now. When you first join Kira or open Kira, you will be presented with a screen that is something like this screen right here. Let's go ahead and click add. Okay. Um, so once you're here, what you're going to do is either plug your printer in and hit refresh. And if it has the, if you have the driver installed and it reads your printer, it will show up here. Otherwise, you're going to go down here to add non-networked printer. And find it in the list now it does start with Ultimaker's machines obviously it's their software but in here you can find pretty much any brand that you would need um, I do also have a dirty little secret there's a video about this on my channel that if you can't find the printer that you need I recommend going with the Creality Ender 3 Pro profile and then let's go ahead and we'll do that now we're gonna hit add and in your screen it's going to show up like this okay and it's gonna have the dimensions so if you're not using an Ender 3 Pro machine um, your machine should automatically have the right directions if you p dimensions if you picked it from the list if not you're gonna enter those here okay um, the X is the left to right dimension depth is the beds dimension that is the Y and then height is obviously how tall you can print one other quick note a lot of people when setting this up will tick this box that says origin at center. Don't do that. It's kind of counterintuitive, but uh, if you click that, it's going to print your object at the front left corner of your bed and not in the center of the bed. So that causes a lot of problems for new users. The reason I go with the Ender 3 Pro is because it has all this nice start and NG code that works really well. And pretty much all of the parameters are standard because most of the printers these days are clones of this machine, which is a clone of the Prusa Mark two I believe the i2 or the i3 I can't remember but uh, basically a lot of that stuff's gonna be the same so this is my my overall go-to if I can't find my printer on that list once you've done that you can go ahead and close it you don't really need to mess with any of this stuff if you look in the extruder tab you'll have your fil filament diameter here um, generally it's gonna be 1.75 don't see too much 2.88 or 3.0 millimeter filament if however that's what your machine uses you're gonna want to put that in here go ahead and close that and a few things about navigation. Now, navigation is easy to do in several different ways in Kira. Right now, I am right clicking the mouse button and I am dragging to rotate around or orbit the view. Let's go ahead and close this, get a little better idea. There are also these keys down here that will reset the orientation, okay? So I can set it to a three quarter view. I can go to front, top, left, or right. And then again, I can right click and drag. Now, if I hit shift, and right click and drag that's panning that's going to allow me to move around the scene okay now notice we don't have any objects in here we're just moving around what is representing our 3d print space this cube right here is the allotted space we have to print our model and if you look there is also a grayed out area here now i know this seems like a lot of information but it's all pretty basic and you're going to need to know most of it to get a successful print anyway so let's take a closer look at this grayed out area and i'll explain to you what it is in here in your settings when you first start Kira, you're gonna have the recommended settings, okay? You can choose to turn adhesion on or off. Basically, that's gonna turn on the generic settings for your printer. 
and in this case if we go to custom and scroll down to adhesion we can see that it's a brim and a brim is going to print extra lines around the outer perimeter of the model to help keep it held to the bed and that is a good thing we want it to stick to the bed we don't want it to release until we're ready so um, that however is determining this gray area here the longer the minimum length here the less area we'll have to print on because it, it needs that area to print the skirt so basically it's saying you can butt your object up to here and it'll still have room to print that skirt on the bed and you won't have any issues if we increase this number And see it changes our length and I actually had to switch to skirt there to do it so if I change the skirt is like the same thing except it's gonna put a perimeter around it it's not going to attach it to the model it's not really adhesion it's more of a purge line um, but this affects as well as your raft um, I'm gonna go ahead and change that back before I forget and can't operate and we'll change this back to 250 okay um, so that's basically your area there anything that you can fit in this white square that is not taller than this blue line up here that you can print so let's go ahead and show you how to bring in a model and then I'll show you a little bit more about navigation so if I go over here basically I can drag and drop any model that I wish to into the build area and it will show up now I can drag in several objects I can multiply this object there's lots of ways to manipulate this but we're not going to go over that right now this is basically just just the print settings you will need in order to have a successful print with your first print so I'm gonna print this ring and in order to do that I'm gonna to try to lay it as flat as I can so these are the navigation buttons the top one is translate or move you can grab the item and move it around or you can use the arrows to move it around um, and then we have scale you can make the object larger or smaller if you wish to I'm gonna leave it alone though we will use this rotate though so there's this button that says lay flat that will try to find the flattest orientation to put against the build plate uh, as you can see it's moving it around and it found this angle right here so it's finding a nice flat spot at the bottom and it's trying to put it down right there and that's basically what it's recommending we use however I'm gonna use this select face to align the build plate and I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna click the outside of this ring there we go that laid it down as flat as it'll go so there should be an overhang here this stuff that's denoted in red you can see how it is just slightly hovering above the build plate that is what's known as an overhang and when you have an overhang you're gonna want to use support so we're gonna click generate support and we're gonna use a normal support and the pattern is zigzag and then we're gonna go ahead and go up look at a couple more settings so our layer height is set to 0.2 that is medium um, that's medium speed medium quality the lower the layer height the better the quality but the longer the print will take because the more layers that were required to build up to that same height wall thickness is going to be how much how thick the walls are the outer shell of the object and then you have infill down here the density is 20 percent so it'll fill 20 percent of the inside area of the object with this infill and you can change the pattern for that as well we're gonna leave that alone as well I'm gonna change the temperature here a little bit um, because I'm using a, a high temperature PLA uh, in most cases 220 is a little high for PLA you probably want to start at 205 or 210 and then work your way in either direction to find that sweet spot uh, build plate temperature this is going to affect your adhesion or how well the object sticks to the bed as well so you're definitely gonna want if you're using anything other than PLA you're gonna want that at 60 or higher um, for PLA you don't necessarily need it but it does add to adhesion properties if you have it at 50 or higher I keep mine about 60 uh, print speed is something that should be set generically by you setting up your printer so don't mess with that until you get a couple successful prints and then you can go ahead and test the limits of how fast your machine can go but basically we're going to leave all of this alone for now one important thing to note is the retraction this is going to create a lot of artifacts on your object if you don't have this turned on what this does is it pulls up a little blob of filament before it moves so it isn't stringing in between uh, movements of the printer so you're gonna want that turned on and for most printers this is a good distance however I'm using a direct drive machine which means I don't need to retract nearly as much so I'm gonna change that and that is all basically with PLA you're gonna want 
your cooling turned on and we have support and adhesion so we can go ahead and slice this and we should get a pretty good representation of what's going on with our model and how it's actually going to print so once it's done slicing we'll go over to preview mode and we can zoom through the layers and show you exactly what's going on here alright so you can see it's done slicing we're given a couple options down here uh, we can either click preview mode which we'll do in just a second or we can save to removable now this says removable drive E if you insert more than one it will give you the option if you click here it will give you your other options so I don't want to save to my removable drive if I want to save to my hard drive I can do that um, or vice versa let's go ahead and click preview mode here and it's gonna jump us over to the preview and we can go ahead and actually scroll through this layer by layer and you can see inside there the yellow color there is the infill and the pattern that it's in is determined by our infill pattern you can have an object completely solid by either turning infill up to 100% or turning the walls onto a ridiculously high number. The walls are going to be these green lines and then the red line is your outer shell. So that's the outer wall. That's the surface you'll actually see. So a very, very important part of the object. Not only can I scroll upwards and downwards through the object to make sure there's no defects, I can scroll through each individual layer and make sure that the path is exactly what I want. Now, one of the other things to note are these little white blobs right here. Now, that's where it's starting and ending a layer, and that's going to create a seam in that object. Um, it's unavoidable, but generally, you want to try to place those on the inside of the object. So, if we go back and we go to our wall settings, you can see that there is a place for Z seam alignment. And right now, I have it set to smart hiding, so it should hide pretty well. Uh, usually putting it on the sharpest corner or on the inside of the object works really well. The other thing to look at here is if we scroll down to the part of the model that was hanging over the build plate, notice how there's all that blue down there. There is a crisscross layer here in between our actual support, which is the light blue, and the model. Now this is our support interface. The denser this is, the more it's going to be melded to the object, so the harder it's going to be to remove from the object. That setting is also found in the support settings although if you don't see it you might have to go to up here and go to support Z distance um, and right here this will determine the distance how far away it is from the model and then there is also a support interface uh, thickness and a lot of settings in here for, for making it e easier to detach models after you get them off the build plate. So now that you have pretty much gotten the run through on what we're doing, um, Kira should be pretty simple for you to jump in and use. Like I said, you can load in multiple models. Few more quick tips. You can also navigate around using the arrow keys. That'll give you orbit. Okay. Um, and then you can also load in files by going to open file and the other thing I wanted to show you is if you take two models in here and you combine them together you can select them both and then if you go to file export selection it'll export both those models joined into one STL so it's a good way to combine models uh, if you're interested in how to divide models how to take pieces out of models or how to subtract one model from another definitely check out my Kira questions playlist. I'll put that up in the corner, be in the top right corner of this video. And if you have any questions, leave them on this video, any of my Kira videos. If you put Kira question in the question that you're leaving, uh, it's easier for me to find. That's one of the ways that I search for the questions I'm going to make videos on. If you're interested in finding out more about each of these settings individually and seeing a video on each one of them, I will put that playlist up in the corner as well. I definitely recommend getting some in-depth tips on these playlists and using them to your advantage. And I will say the last version of this playlist I did was in this year, but it was a couple Kira versions ago. That's not really a big deal. All of the, the information in there should still apply. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. Make sure you subscribe to me on YouTube and hit that bell so you can get notified when I put out new Kira videos. I put out lots of other 3D printing and tech videos as well, but I tend to get a lot of good responses and a lot of good questions for these Kira videos. So hopefully yours will be the next one I make a video about. Thanks, guys. Technivorous out. 
stick around guys, I got another YouTube recommended video for you right here, and if you haven't already, subscribe, 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 make sure that you smash that like button, we'll see you in the next one, Technivorous out.